<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, welcome. Welcome. Um, uh, I'm Simon Nixon. Uh, I used to uh, uh, come to Greece a lot a few years ago when I was writing for the Wall Street Journal. Since then, I worked for the, right, the Times. And I now um, publish my uh, uh, my own uh, newsletter, The Wealth of Nations. Um, Alex, this is great. Um, Alex Patel needs an introduction. The chief economic advisor to uh, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, the Greek prime minister. Um, Alex, it's a few years since I was last in Greece during the crisis years. Uh, since then, I see that uh, Greece has been called the country of the year by the economists. Uh, the, uh, it's one of the fastest growing economies in Europe. Uh, foreign direct investment is up. Uh, the debt GDP level is down. Exports have rocketed. Uh, so what's gone right and why? Uh, that's a good, a, good, a good morning to everybody. <laughs> uh, great to see you, uh, Simon. That's a very difficult question. could talk about it for hours. I would say that uh, the Prime Minister, when he was uh, entrusted with leading the country, had very much in his mind a set plan on the economic side and, el and elsewhere of how to proceed. And I would say it consisted of some very basic building blocks. The first one was to defuse the bombs, let's say, that were already present. I will remind you that in 2019, Greece still had capital controls. It sounds almost historic now, but uh, that meant dealing with a banking system that had a large share of NPEs. These have been reduced, uh, recapitalizing the banking system, and as you know, now we are slowly divesting from uh, the shares that the uh, HFSF was controlling. Uh, second one was uh, lowering the changing, rather, the mix between taxes and spending, lowering the uh, tax on, particularly on salaried labor and on capital, because that uh, spurred economic growth and ended up even uh, increasing government revenues. So changing the mix was very important. And the third, of course, most important of all, which is to just do reforms. There are so many reforms that, that were done. Over 400 bills passed through parliament in the first term. Uh, difficult to single out specific things. If you ask the audience, they'll, they'll talk to you about uh, digitization of the state and uh, of the economy. I would add uh, the green transition, a huge shift. But then there was a lot of uh, other changes uh, to the uh, pension system, labor laws, education, <coughs> excuse me, the insolvency, single insolvency framework, and uh, just lots of stuff that's that's led to where we are. And of course, uh, simplifying the way uh, to do business as to the accolades that you mentioned, I'd add that the Economist Intelligence Unit found that uh, Greece ranked number one in terms of improvement of uh, business environment amongst uh, 82 countries using 91 indicators over the past four years. So that's sort of uh, what happened. Yeah, well, it's been a, obviously a, a, a hell of a turnaround and uh, in the space of a few years, but I'm curious how much of the uh, of this you know, of the economic data we're seeing reflects a um, the cyclical recovery from what was this deep depression over many years, uh, and um, uh, as and, and how much of it is driven by new investment and new business and new opportunities in Greece? Uh, both. I mean, you uh, cyclical recovery is easier said than done. I will remind you that the previous government was in power for four years and still growth was anemic. Uh, you could have had a cyclical recovery earlier on and it's an opportunity wasted for Greece. Greece wasted four years effectively from 2015 to 2019. All of this could have happened um, earlier. So there is some of it that's, uh, that's obviously just catching up, but there's a lot of it that's new and there's always new opportunities and these opportunities need to be uh, unleashed uh, by government. I'll give you a very simple example, offshore wind parks. There was no legal framework for offshore wind parks. Now there is one, and there's going to be investment in that sector. That's not uh, a cyclical bounce. And similarly speaking, um, a lot of the FDI that has come in um, uh, has, has uh, come to many sectors. We have, oh dear, we have uh, uh, manufacturing, for example. Manufacturing renaissance in Greece grew 21% over the past uh, four years. Uh, compared to a decline of 9% of manufacturing production in countries like Germany. So it's not just cyclical, there's also a strong structural story to it. Mm -hmm. And um, what, um, so where do you think that the biggest opportunities now lie in terms of taking the recovery to the next stage? So, so uh, the Prime Minister um, outlined his vision 
for Greece at the elections last year, and those were to uh, converge with Europe. So we spent a decade trying to stay in Europe, <laughs> and now we'll spend some time trying to converge in Europe because we're still behind. And that's the overriding objective, and that means not just converging uh, salaries, but converging all the institutions and everything that goes with it. There's still a lot of work, obviously, to be done on the digital and the green uh, revolutions. These will be with us for many, many, many years to come. Um, and there's uh, still a, a lot of work uh, to be done uh, in reforming the state. But I would say the priorities were laid out um, in the uh, previous election, healthcare, education, um, and there were still a lot of reforms that are being done. As we speak, I, will, I would like to highlight three reforms being implemented today. The first one is that infamous connection between POS machines and cash registers. What that means is that when you use your card to buy something, you will be certain that the VAT will accrue to government and not to the uh, conniving business person. <laughs> um, this is a very complicated project that is being completed as we speak. We have a new judicial map that is, uh, that is going to be put in place. This is not just about reorganizing the court system. It's also about freeing up um, uh, more judges so that the, uh, we expect the average co court case to go down from 1,500 days to 1,000 days. So the number one problem that business people complain about in Greece today is the slow, uh, slow justice system. It's very different to back in 2019 when people complained about high taxes and too much bureaucracy. Those two complaints are mostly gone. Uh, they've been replaced by new ones, the primary one being the justice system. Um, and then there's a new system of appointing um, senior uh, positions within government. So there's always been an accusation that the Greek government uh, is based on clientelism, and that the Ministry of Interior has uh, put through a very important uh, reform where effectively all the senior positions in government will now be filled through a more rigorous process. We have, for the first time, uh, written examinations for the heads of hospitals. These were completed, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, there was actually complaints that the exams were too difficult. About over a thousand people participated. Um, and so then they will go to the next stage, which will be interviews uh, before the appointment. So those are, those, this is the kind of stuff that's happening and will continue to happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things I notice when you look at the, the data in Greece, though, is that um, uh, there are things that, some things that stand out. Construction is incredibly low. Uh, private sector debt is very low. Um, the banking system is clearly now in a far more robust state than it was uh, a few years ago, but it doesn't appear to be lending a huge amount to the domestic economy. Is there a, is there a I mean, leaving aside foreign investment, is there a domestic investment issue? Are people, uh, can, are people able to get the credit they need, or alternatively, are they, do they have the, enough animal spirits to, to invest in Greece itself? So you touch upon many, many topics. Let me take one at a time. The construction point that you mentioned is very interesting because if you were to ask a Greek, the Greek media is all about articles about how we're investing too much in real estate. And, and, and you're, you're saying the exact opposite. If you look at the data, you will find that uh, investment in construction uh, was very high before the crisis, too high, and then collapsed to too low. Uh, and today, if you compare Greece to other European countries, you will find that investment in construction is still below where it is, as a percent of GDP, is still below where it is in other European countries. So the uh, complaints sometimes people have that there's too much real estate investment isn't necessarily correct. Uh, we have, uh, I'll give you a very good example. There's a wonderful location in Delphi, stunning location. Uh, the hotel would you know, clearly benefit from an upgrade. There's, this is the legacy of a crisis that slowly depleted the capital stock. There needs to be a lot of investment in Greece, and there needs to be investment in all sectors, including uh, construction, and this is beginning to happen. Um, now, uh, bank lending. The banks are now healthy, so we are now focusing on the next step, which is are we certain that they, are, that they are financing the Greek economy the right way? If you look at the loan book, they're growing the corporate loan book, particularly to large companies, and that's good. Uh, but if you look at their household loan book, they're projecting that it'll shrink in the coming years, and that's not good. And the mix between the two, corporate and household, is not the right uh, mix. Over time, 
there needs to be more mortgage lending. Today, 80% of real estate transactions in Greece are done without credit. Uh, I can't think of another country where that's the case. And yet the real estate market is booming. So there's clearly a need for more mortgage lending. The government stepped in with a program to subsidize uh, interest rate, uh, subsidize the interest rate for loans to uh, young people. Um, and um, some of the banks are announcing some new products there, but it's clear that we need more household lending, particularly in mortgages. And then, generally speaking, you know, to answer your question, there needs to be capital from everywhere. Greece, uh, the, the investment has boomed in recent years, but it's still below where we want it to be and where it should be. And the reality is that the capital gap that we have is large enough to, there's enough room for capital from all sources, from outside Greece and from within Greece. Mm -hmm. Well, it's um, uh, certainly coming from London, one's reminded uh, just what extraordinary resources Greece has, uh, just in terms of uh, stunning landscapes and sunshine. Um, but uh, what, um, what are the areas of the economy where you see the opportunities for new investment, new industries for Greece to uh, to, 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 to take a lead in the European economy? You know, we get this question a lot, and I think the official answer would be that we don't necessarily believe in industrial policy or championing particular sectors. That's the role of the private sector. The role of the government is to create the right rules, level uh, playing field, and the institutional framework, for example, I gave you the example of the offshore wind parks uh, before, and to make sure that you know, taxation is low enough to encourage uh, investment. Having said that, uh, since we do get that question a lot, um, I do get to answer it many times. And uh, there are some very obvious areas that the country has an advantage. You mentioned the wind and the sun. Uh, climate transition is an obvious area. Now, here we have this bizarre situation where we have today, I, I don't know how many people realize this, but today the, we have handed out uh, enough licenses to cover all our uh, renewable energy needs until 2030. And we have over two times the amount of uh, applications pending. So clearly, you know, there, there are a lot of re renewable energy projects going on. Where is the next area to focus on? Storage, batteries, connectivity, and particularly to develop the uh, uh, connectivity with other European countries, with Italy, uh, through the Balkans with Germany, potentially in the future with Ukraine. So the green transition is one area. Then we have uh, still a lot of opportunities in digital and information technology. We have well-educated uh, population and the strong diaspora. You have uh, logistics. The country is now uh, firmly a member of the European Union uh, in a geographic location that strad straddles Europe, North Africa, Middle East, Asia. We have some ambitious projects going on, IMEC, for example, connecting Greece to India. Uh, then you have new areas like education. We just uh, voted a reform to allow private universities so Greece can become an education hub like Cyprus has become a regional hub for people to come and study here. Tourism remains the biggest sector in Greece. Many people say, oh, you know, tourism is overdone, maybe, but uh, as I'm sure people will agree, those, as I mentioned before, if all, all the participants in this forum will agree that there's still uh, a lot of room for tourism to go in Greece. We can have, it's a great location for conferences, and um, it has some incredible sites. I mean, this used to be considered the center of the world, and uh, it could benefit from, uh, from more investment. Um, and then you have uh, agriculture. Agriculture, you know, is in a transition globally because of climate change. Uh, in Greece requires a lot of investment because there's need for technology, for larger scale uh, uh, agriculture projects. Fisheries within that, fisheries, you know, the fisheries ecosystem in Greece is underdeveloped if you compare it, for example, to Norway or to other countries. Um, um, pharmaceuticals, we just had, you know, 20 CEOs uh, representing nearly $3 trillion of market cap visit the Athens and meet with the Prime Minister last week, and uh, it's very clear that, that uh, pharmaceuticals could also uh, be developed in Greece. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've missed. Can, can I go just so you, you, um, since we're getting, we're running a slightly sh shorter time now, but the, um, you mentioned the diaspora, which you know, is a reminder that uh, 
Greece has, the, the, much of the world is blessed with Greek talent in, uh, in, 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 in all sorts of fields, and Greece has, you know, uh, Greek, Greeks play prominent roles in, in, including in my own country and elsewhere. But um, it's also a reminder that um, not everybody in Greece will necessarily have, feel they participated or enjoyed this recovery that shows up in the data that um, salaries have not recovered and in fact are still even in nominal terms below where they were 10 years ago. Uh, unemployment still remains, I'm sure you would agree, unacceptably high, especially for young people. What, um, what can, the, you know, is, can the government do or what is the outlook for young people in Greece in terms of being able to ensure that, that, they, uh, that they, they don't join the diaspora, that the, the, the jobs and opportunities and investment comes here and that they can soon participate in the better economic conditions? Uh, very difficult question. We have three and a half minutes. So, <laughs> uh, you know, if you, I, I myself lived outside Greece for, uh, for a total of 18 years. So it's, it's sort of two things, I would say. It's a better salaries, but also uh, a feeling that the country is moving in the, the right direction and that there is meritocracy, and that's really the overriding answer to your question. Uh, things are moving in the right direction. Unemployment has declined, and in fact, a lot of employers complain that they can't find people to, to hire. Uh, wages are increasing. We just um, uh, legislated another increase in the minimum wage. It's now up 27% since 2019. Uh, price level has gone up around 17% or so during the same uh, period. The average wage, depending on how you look at it, the average wage has also exceeded um, uh, price inflation um, in aggregate. And in fact, this year we'll see a, a real uh, wage uh, increase for, I would say, most segments of the population. Having said that, it is very important always to not leave someone behind um, and, and the government is very uh, careful to, to pay attention uh, to those issues and to uh, make sure that the poorer sectors of the population um, also benefit from uh, economic recovery. But ultimately, the answer to your question is you just need to uh, stay humble and do uh, more reforms and make sure that you are continuously pushing things uh, forward. And that's not always an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm tempted in the last minute, since I um, come from a country that's been uh, experienced its own crisis in the, in, in the last few years, to so, uh, ask what, uh, what lessons the um, uh, Britain and indeed other countries in Europe could learn from the Greek experience. Uh, what some, you know, it, there are many countries in, in Europe that could probably do with some structural reforms, but what, uh, what do you think the um, Greek experience has for the rest of um, I think the Greek experience is an optimistic, optimistic uh, lesson to, to other countries that have problems, which is that eventually things do sort themselves out. And I think um, what, what really um, ends up being the case is uh, populism, which can be broadly defined as offering easy solutions to complex problems, sort of like lose weight by eating chocolate, that kind of thing, uh, doesn't work. And um, yes, you might be tempted by it uh, briefly and momentarily, and, but eventually um, a leader will come along that will uh, reject that uh, approach. And a lot of times solutions to problems can be uh, simpler than what they, think, what they seem, just, just about doing uh, what, what seems reasonable at the time. So, uh, but, but it's... Uh, uh, so I think that Greece does offer an optimistic, uh, an optimistic uh, uh, lesson for, for other countries. And of course, um, people do matter. Um, this is my own personal opinion. Um, I do think that the difference was the current Prime Minister, Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Well, on that optimistic note, thank you very much indeed. Thank Alex. you, Sam. Thank, thank you. you.